congratulations on making it this far in our Tableau training. Let's take a moment to see how much we have covered to this point. We started off by learning when and how Tableau can be useful in corporate decision making and learned how to install Tableau's free version, Tableau Public. We then learned how to connect data to Tableau and what we can do with the different parts of the Tableau interface. Not long after, we created your first Tableau chart. We learned how to duplicate sheets and how to create tables. Then we learned how to create custom fields in order to manipulate our data within Tableau easily. In addition, we learned how to add totals and subtotals to our tables and how to work with filters. We explored functionalities, allowing us to work with multiple data sources, such as joins and data blending. And most recently, we created three meaningful charts. Now we are going to build our dashboard, which will be the last piece of the puzzle, really. It will be interesting to put all three charts right next to each other and see the type of insights we can get by analyzing them in one place. Okay. Let's get right into it. To create a new dashboard, I'll click on the tiny icon we have here. See? When we hover the mouse over it, it starts displaying New Dashboard. Once the dashboard has been created, my first task would be to modify its size. Right now, it is a bit too small, isn't it? I can adjust the size settings from the left part of the dashboard screen. Let's work with a range that is 1,000 pixels wide and has a height of 800 pixels. I hope you are watching this video from a large screen. Okay, let's drag and drop the three charts. All I have to do is drag them and place each chart where I want it. Tableau is quite smart and manages to find space and guesses what we want to do when we position the cursor above the dashboard area. Of course, there are a few things that need to be adjusted. I'll remove the legends we don't need, leaving the audiobooks legend only. Moreover, I would like to place the audiobook legend below the pie chart it belongs to. This way, what we are doing will be much clearer. I'll simply press on the legend and then grab the part you see here, dragging it below the pie chart. Let's resize a bit to get rid of the arrows. Perfect. Now to remove the arrows of the pie chart and fit it in its allocated space without any problems, we'll need to adjust its size from the chart to sheet. Let's go there and reduce the pie chart's size just a tiny bit horizontally and vertically. And then we can go back to the dashboard sheet and see what happened. Okay, great. The arrows disappeared. We are one step closer. Let's change the chart titles a bit because, frankly, they don't mean that much. We should have done it earlier, but better late than never, right? A good title for the first chart would be Number of Reviews and Average Rating. Also, I would like to adjust its font size to 11 and put the text in bold. We'll do the same for the other charts too, in order to be consistent, which is quite important when building a dashboard. The title of the pie chart would be Number of Reviews by Audiobook. As promised, I'll apply a font size of 11 and a bold text effect. And lastly, the title of the third chart will be Ratio of Reviews to Sales. Very well. Our dashboard is almost ready. In our next lesson, I will show you how we can add a filter and make this a truly interactive tool that allows us to dig deeper and filter all three charts contemporaneously.